So, this is going to be my review of Amazing X-Men Volume 2, World War Windigo. Let me just say this right up front. Um, I didn't realize this, it didn't dawn on me until I finished reading this volume of Amazing X-Men, but all three volumes of Amazing X-Men deal with the X-Men delving into the supernatural in some aspect or another. In the last volume by Jason Aaron, it was them, in he the X-Men in Heaven and Hell. In the following volume, in this volume, we have them dealing with the Windigo. In the fall, in the next one, Once and Future Juggernaut, aside from two, vol two issues that kind of... Uh, more or less kind of tie into Axis, the, that event. Yeah, remember that Axis? I don't. Um, it delves with the, the Juggernaut. And yes, I'm fully aware that the Juggernaut is an X-Men villain, but his or the, the origins of the Juggernaut are based in supernatural, enter, you know, supernatural uh, lore. So really, in all three volumes, it's the X-Men versus the supernatural. But again, like I said, with the, la with the last Amazing X-Men volume, this really feels like classic X-Men storytelling. This feels a lot like um, something you would read from Chris Claremont's run, because he did do a lot of supernatural stuff, he did do a lot of paranormal stuff with the X-Men, and it's tons of fucking fun. Now, before it, I get into the main story, in this volume, there's also a one-off issue where um, Spider-Man, where Firestar and Iceman team up with Fire... Uh, uh, Spider-Man teams up... Got tongue-tied there. Spider-Man teams up with Iceman and Firestar to rescue a goat from aliens. Let me repeat that for you, people. <laughs> Spider-Man teams up with Iceman and Firestar to rescue a goat from aliens. Only in comics, people. Only in comics. I don't want to go into the full details of this story, but it revolves around college football, and I think that, that clarifies enough for some people. Anyway, let's get into the main story of World War Windigo. Now, World War Windigo... Before, if you don't know the origins of the Windigo... In mythology, in, he, in the Marvel Universe, it's a little different, but I'll explain in mythology. Mythology-wise, in the Marvel Universe, if you eat the flesh of another human on Canadian soil, you, are, you become a Wendigo, this flesh-eating monster that will hunt, uh, hunt down other humans to feed upon and pass along the curse, and the, the more you eat, the hungrier you get. So you're, it's literally the embodiment of gluttony when, you, when it comes down to it. It's literally the embodiment of just sheer gluttony. And, yeah, and, he, and then you're probably wondering, well, cannibalism is usually a, uh, a look-down thing, a, a, usually a thing that's looked at, frowned upon, so why is there so many Wendigos when initially there should be only one or two? I'm glad you asked that. The answer is pretty goddamn disgusting. So, I'm going to spoil this right here, so if you don't want to know, sorry, um, I guess you can pause this, read the comic, then come back or something, but yeah. It literally gives you the answer right up ahead. So the reason why there's like a zombie-esque horde of Wendigos is because at a meatpacking company... Oh, you already know where this is going. <laughs> a, a man kills his co-worker, then stuffs the body in the meat grinder and passes out the meat and hands out the meat to a, a few local towns throughout Canada. Well, the curse is kind of indiscriminate to accidental eating... But yeah, that that dude literally pulled a soil at green and made the walking windigo. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Meanwhile, before while the um, windigos are more or less windigoing around the world, around Canada, um, Wolverine is helping Vindicator, aka Heather, find her husband, a, a, um, also known as Guardian, the leader of Alpha Flight. And he's gone missing. So, and keep in mind, Logan has lost his healing factor at this point. This is shortly before the death of Wolverine. So, keep that in mind. But yeah, basically, what happens is that Wolf, that um, Wolverine and Heather get attacked by Windigos, and Storm and the others go out to find him. You know, they go out to to rescue Logan because he no longer has his healing factor, and now he's he's gone missing. So they go to Canada. Um, and Sever Storm leads an X-Men team consisting of Rockslide, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Rachel Summers, Northstar, and Firestar, and Nightcrawler. And alongside the uh, alongside Alpha Flight, they they have to fight their way through the Windigo horde, this Windigo horde from ta from just annihilating Canada. So <laughs> this comic again it del it has the X-Men again in the super uh, delving into the realm of the supernatural. And the Wendigo is something they fought. Well, namely Wolverine has fought. But still, it's, um... <laughs> it's, 
it's still a uh, it's still a thing the X Men have dealt with, and in here um, we delve really deep into Native American mythology, and as well as we get to see the Alpha Flight, which is a team we no longer get to see a lot of hang out, and we even get to see the Avengers. Well, namely Cap, Iron Man, and Thor deal with the situation, and in here. Um, the Cana- the Canadian, uh, of course, with a wi- a horde of Wendigos swarming across the Canadian countryside, a lot of people are going to be heading south. So, of course, you know, um, <laughs> what happens is that um, the National Guard comes in and is actually trying to keep Canada uh, Canadians from le- in- entering the U.S. border, and everyone's like, yeah, let's keep them out, let's keep them out, let's build a giant wall around Canada. <laughs> And Captain America just comes in and says, "Cut that shit out, let him in." And of course, if you guys don't know the in the Marvel universe, the Cana- the Windigo curse only affects those who are on Canadian soil. So the big thing is that when the Windigos cross over into U.S. soil, the curse goes. It's not really gone, but it's more like suppressed. So as long as he stay, as long as the, anyone comes to the American board, you know, to the American side of the cut co- of the continent, they're safe. Unless, of course, the curse grows stronger, which of inevitably it does. So here's what happens: the Avengers, who only sh- they kind of disappear midway through the comic for some reason, but yeah, some of the X-Men stay behind to, to you know say, protect the uh, protect what's left of Canada from being eaten alive by Wendigos, while Storm and Snowbird lead another half of the X-Men in Alpha Flight to go find the great beasts of the North, which are you know they're these ancient Native American gods. And they're in the middle of a civil war because the god of the Wendigos, uh, Tanarok, not to be confused with Legend of Korra t- uh, Tanarok, although he does lose like Tanarok, but that's beside the point. And, yeah, they have to save the great beasts from destroying each other and, of course, the Wendigos from overrunning pretty much the world. Because as, as Tanarok's power grows stronger, uh, the curse grows stronger, so it no longer affects, you know, it only is no longer bounded to Canadian soil. It can actually go on U.S. soil. The character interactions are a lot of fun with this comic, especially North Star interacting with his twin sister Aurora, who, man, she, I, I haven't read a lot of Alpha Flight comics. Not because they're, I don't think the Alpha Flight is a bad team. They're just very underutilized, especially nowadays. But I totally forgot Aurora, you know, North Star's twin sister was a total bitch. Oh my god, she is like bitch with a capital B. Oh my god. And even North Star's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you're my twin sister." <laughs> yeah. So, this is a really fun comic. It's a, you know, once again it feels like something Chris Claremont would have written, and it's really cool to see the X-Men go head to head with just this boundless just horde of Wendigos coming after them again and again and again. Um, if you're looking, f- I don't think you need to really read uh, the first volume of this, unless you want to realize. Oh, all you need to really know is that the whole point of the first volume of Amazing X Men was to bring Nightcrawler back. But in here, I don't really think you need to. All you need to know is that Nightcrawler's back, and now they're fighting Windigo, and Wolverine's lost ceiling factor. That's really about it for the comic. It's a really fun one. Um, I really enjoyed this story arc. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you enjoy seeing, like, fun X-Men type stories with just a little bit of... There's some dark humor in here, and there's some dark moments. But yeah, this is really fun. If you're really tired of zombies, check out a horde of Wendigos. That's what I always say. But anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.